but find the joy in the holiday itself for the reason why we're celebrating it. Look to Jesus. Look to the Savior. Look at the joy that we can have in knowing that a Savior was born, you know, thousands of years ago to die for the whole world, to die for sinners, to die for your loved one. It's a great time of joy and rejoicing. Let's remember that. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in some other emotions and other, and other things. Let's, let's remember the rejoicing part. How about number two, grace? It's a time of great grace. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 1. Talking about the meaning of Christmas tonight. Of course, primarily the meaning of Christmas is that a Savior is born, and we ought to rejoice over that. That ought to make us happy. That ought to bring us joy. Number two, the meaning, part of one of the meanings of Christmas is that there's grace involved. The grace of God bringing the Savior into the world. Grace is something that you get, is there is given that you don't deserve. The human race didn't deserve the Son of God to come and physically arrive and walk on this earth. We didn't deserve that level of fellowship. We didn't deserve that level of sacrifice that was made. We didn't deserve any of that. But through God's grace and his love, he did that for us. He came to this earth. He, he came bodily into this, earth, into this world to live among us, to, to experience what it's like to be a man with us, to be tempted, to have sorrow and grief, and, and to feel pain, and to feel the things that we feel. And, and he did it only through his grace. John chapter 1, of course, in verse number 1, the Bible reads, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Word is God. We believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. That is God. Look at verse number 14, whereby we know that this is talking, the Word is talking about Jesus Christ because the Bible says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And, of course, I'm not going to spend the time to, to prove the only begotten of the Father is referring to Jesus Christ. That should be self-evident for anyone who's read the Bible one time, or the New Testament one time. But look at what it says there at the very end of that verse, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is full of grace. And grace was brought into this earth on, on the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the, the giver of grace. He brought in grace for us. Before he came, what did we have? The law. But thank God that at the birth of Christ, we have Christ bringing grace into us. 